86. Yeah, you got it. All right, guys, we are in our science book. The page is 186, and we are talking about the carbon cycle today. When I say the carbon cycle, what does that make you maybe think of? Do we Have we heard about carbon before? What are you what thinking of? John says carbon dioxide. Thanks for raising your hand. You're welcome. You didn't take, you took one. Um, Kendall Cole, what are you thinking of? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. That's the big thing. And what do we know about carbon? What are some things we've learned about you carbon dioxide so far? Boo -boo Stop talking. You're not raising your hand. Mama Shark gonna get you. Mama I think that was Daddy Shark. Mama Shark, get you. Okay. All right. What do we know about carbon dioxide so far in our schema up here? What are some things we know about carbon dioxide, Lily? That's what we breathe out. We breathe it out. What else do we know about carbon dioxide, Fiona? We learned that our body systems that we have carbon dioxide in our lungs, but we're trying to what? Get it out. Get it out. Okay. Kendall, what else do we know about carbon dioxide? It's bad if you have too much. Bad if you have too much in your body as a human, it could be toxic. Okay. Which means poisonous. Sean, what else do we know about carbon dioxide? Like, um, when you put it when, when you get hurt or boo boo. When you get a boo-boo. Um, you put it on there and it fizzes up. That's not it. That's that's like peroxide. Oh. Okay. Nope, never mind that. Um, Zeke, what else do we know? We breathe it out. We already said that. I know. What the last topic is probably that it hurts the atmosphere. It hurts the atmosphere. No. It's in the air. It's in the air. Why is it in the air? It's from the atmosphere. It's part of the atmosphere. We breathe it out, so it's out there in the air. And then the what, Jason? Suck it in. Who and sucks it in? The trees suck it the in. The trees. Release oxygen. The trees suck it in. The plants, the trees, the grass, all of those guys, the plant type life Neat. breathes it in. And then gets rid of the air. And you know, then, okay. The All right. So we breathe it out. The plants breathe it in. So it definitely is in the air because that's where we're breathing it out. And then the plants are getting it from that same air and breathing it in. Do you think that this process of us breathing it out and plants breathing it in might have something to do with this thing we're about to learn called the carbon cycle. Yeah. Maybe. Yes, I think it's because carbon can't let Okay, so hearing carbon cycle, carbon dioxide clearly must be a part of this carbon cycle. Lily, what are your thoughts? Um, I thought carbon um, is carbon kind of like for Okay. She says it has. She, it made her think of the mutualism we talked about yesterday, where where two things are benefiting. Plants are benefiting, and we are benefiting. Um, Sophie. I was gonna ask you before. Not right now. Um, Zeke. Yeah, but um, symbiosis isn't it organisms? It is. Yeah, and okay. another thing is, um, does it have anything? When I hear carbon, um, I think of like carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. Does that have anything to do with it? How does carbon monoxide work? Like, okay, it, so Zeke said he's heard of carbon dioxide, which we know is what we're breathing out and the plants are breathing in, but he's also heard of carbon monoxide, and what is that all about? So let's. Let's look in at our book. Water? In the water. All right, so let's look. So you've got, if you've turned to your work, to your book page, you already have this chart here that you can kind of glance at. So let's look real quick at our book, and let's read through some of this and see what we can figure out. Because looking at this diagram, it looks like there's a lot more arrows than just we breathe it out and plants breathe it in. So let's see what else is going on. Okay. Carbon is an important element. Let's see if I can do this. I don't know. We're facing the book. 
Um, carbon is an important element. I'm trying to look, look at this chart. Okay, carbon is an important element in every living thing. That's not working. Sorry. You can look at me or whatever you're looking at now because I changed the camera. All right, never mind. All right, carbon is an important element in every living thing. How important is carbon? About 18% of your body is carbon. No. 18% doesn't seem a lot. Round it up to 20. That's a fifth of your body. Okay. Um, carbon is in the atmosphere, and it's plentiful as CO2, which is the same thing as carbon dioxide. And so when we think about that carbon dioxide, we've got what carbon dioxide is, is it's two little molecules stuck to, it's actually three molecules. It's one carbon and two little oxygens. Where, so where you see that CO2, the C oh, stands for carbon. Oh the C stands for the, stop talking. The C stands for the element carbon. And the O stands for oxygen. And the O2 means there's two oxygens stuck to one carbon. Like that. And that makes a little CO2 molecule that sometimes you can't see it in your lungs, getting ready to be breathed out, getting breathed in by the plants. We've got this CO2, carbon dioxide, okay? It's there as a gas. We can't see it, okay? It's also present in rocks, such as limestone, which is a type of rock. Um, however, our body cannot use carbon directly. So how do we get us people and other living things get the carbon we need? There is a continuous exchange of carbon among living things, and it's the carbon cycle. So we already know that we're breathing it out and the plants are breathing it in. But there's going to be more to it, okay? Plants and other photosynthetic organisms, like trees, take in carbon dioxide from the air. They combine it with water to make sugars and other chemicals, such as fats and proteins. These carbon-rich chemicals are then eaten directly by herbivores and omnivores and indirectly by carnivores. So think about this. The plants, the trees, the grass, they're breathing in the carbon. So plants are full of carbon because they're breathing it in. And then the cow comes in the field and he eats up all that grass that's filled with carbon. So now the cow has carbon in his body in two ways. It was inside the grass he ate, and he's like us. He's breathing oxygen and breathing out carbon dioxide. So he's got carbon dioxide in his lungs he's getting rid of, and he's got carbon in the grass that's in his belly. Okay? Now, then if we eat that cow while he's still got that grass in his belly, then now we've got carbon from that as well. So it's like contagious. Okay. Okay. Uh, Macy said, so it's contagious. Well, it's not a disease. It can't hurt you. But yes, you are getting it from other sources. We're not getting carbon only from was erased or our body changing the oxygen into carbon to get rid of it. That's not the only way that we are getting involved with carbon. Josie, yes, ma'am. I wanted to know, so if you like took, you had a house and it had never been opened ever like just pretend that it was just there it just appeared one day no one's ever opened a door there are no cracks at all would there be air in there because like the the tree air can't really get into there if the doors don't open at all or anything you can Scientists can create airtight vacuums where they literally oh, yeah, the seal a room the and they have like a vacuum that sucks out all of the breathable air. Yes, you can have an airtight room. Would we be able to survive in there if it stayed airtight? No, there would literally be no oxygen in there. Um, and as we breathe, it would become the air would become toxic because it would not have enough oxygen in it because there is no oxygen flowing into the room. So yes, what you're saying is possible. Not likely any of us would encounter this unless we were working in a science lab or somewhere where they were specifically trying to work on an experiment on that exact condition. Josie um, has another question. Yeah, Josh. 
Okay, I have another question. So, if it was only filled with carbon dioxide, would we be able to breathe it, like, at all? No, we would just... We would be... Our body would do the breathing process, but it wouldn't be able to use what That's it was what getting. Asking. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't be able to use it, and so we would start probably suffocating, I think, because our lungs yes. wouldn't be able to do the things that they need to do. And we would get really sick. Um, our body would, yeah, we would be suffocating pretty quickly, I would think. We would use up the oxygen that's already in our body pretty quickly, and without more, we would be sure. Think about how many we times you die. breathe in a minute. And if you couldn't do that, it wouldn't take long for you to, to go down, right? Pass out. Pass out first. You can be passed out without oxygen for a little bit, not long. You go long without oxygen and get brain damage, okay? So we wouldn't want to do that. We're not going to test that unless we're a special scientist or like an Olympic swimmer that can hold their breath for a really long time or something like that. Okay. So, yes, we need the oxygen, but let's focus on the – the carbon would be toxic. You are correct. Only carbon would be toxic to us. To plants, they'd be like, yeah, baby. Um, it would be – perfect for them but eventually they wouldn't have they would be breathing out the oxygen and use up all the carbon if it was an airtight room so neither of us could really survive in an airtight room because you have to be in an environment that it has access to the exchange of those gases okay all right both animals and plants burn carbon rich foods for fuel during cellular respiration cellular respiration that's a big fancy word that's for breathing Okay, so when you hear or see in your book, it's a cellular respiration, they're meaning breathing. Okay, so don't get freaked out by that word. Both animals and plants burn carbon for fuel during the breathing process, basically, okay? The end product of breathing, carbon dioxide, returns to the atmosphere. We learned that already when we talked about our respiratory system. We learned that the lungs convert things around and then they get rid of all of that, the blood goes around and picks up all the carbon after we've used it, takes it to the lungs so that we can breathe it out, right? We learned about that already. So we know that carbon dioxide is what we breathe out at the end. Sometimes the carbon may not be recycled for a long period of time. The wood of a tree, for example, contains a large amount of carbon that will remain stored in a tree for as long as it lives. So each of those, we've talked about the, the tree, you can tell how old it is because it has those layers of rings. Each one of those layers of rings has carbon inside of it. So as long as the tree is alive, it's kind of sealed up inside of the trunk of the tree. We can't get to that carbon, um, but it is kind of like how we just always have oxygen in our bodies because that's what our body uses. The tree just always has carbon in it because that's what it's using, what right? The woodpecker's pet on it? And it's still there, oh. okay? Um, all right, carbon stored in plants and other organisms cannot be reused until the plants are either eaten or until they decompose. We're back to decomposing. We're back to decomposing. All of the stuff we've been learning all year is kind of just like, Looping around. it's yeah. like a big puzzle that's fitting together. You are correct. So, yeah, it's a giant puzzle. Life, yay, science. Okay. Um, so let's talk about eating or decompose. So we already talked about like birds, animals, even us eat certain plants. So like even like green beans, corn, those are plants that are breathing carbon dioxide, breathing out oxygen. So when you eat your green beans at lunch today or whatever we're having, I don't know. Um, I don't know what the veggies are today. But when you're eating your fruits and vegetables, they are filled with carbon because they were once plants. Carbon. So they have carbon inside them. It's one of the elements that is inside them. You eat them, you get a little bit of that carbon in your body. It adds to the energy that you're using, right? It helps your body use that energy. Remember when we did the running and the yes. breathing and the jogging, okay? So we use that energy up and then our blood comes around and collects the carbon that we're done with. Breathe it back out. But now, what about the trees? The trees are filled with this carbon. We don't eat trees. And unless you're a woodpecker, you are I don't know many animals that are eating trees, okay? Uh, so the tree dies, it falls down eventually or whatever beaver. in the woods. Hang on. Beaver. Beaver Beavers, all right. Um, I don't know if they eat it, but they like carve it and oh, use it for a home. Wait, no. yeah. a we can argue about what eats the tree, but I really just want the tree to decompose and not be eaten. The point of this, 
Thank you. Okay. I've got a dead tree in my yard. Nope, I've got a dead tree in my yard. And it is, if I just don't do anything with it, well, right now it's a stump, right? Somebody hauled off most of the tree, but I've got a stump that I haven't dealt with in my backyard, and this is the truth, okay? It's dead. If I just, but there is carbon in it because when I first moved into my house, that tree was alive and it was standing there, but it was too close to the house, so we had it cut down so that it didn't have branches that hit my house. Okay, so I've got this stump. There's still carbon in that stump because it used to be part of the tree when it was alive. So that wood that's still there, especially the roots and things down in the ground that haven't seen air or the light of day, they still have carbon in them. Okay. So as that tree eventually decomposes, because we know there are little bacteria and funguses and things that feed on all the decomposing stuff, right? Because the leaves didn't just pile up everywhere and the tree stumps didn't just pile up everywhere. So we fungus. have the fungus and the mold and everything that is eating the decomposing oh, stuff. So now the mold and the fungus, as it's eating the tree stump, is also getting carbon in it because it's getting the carbon from that. And so as it breaks down, and remember that um, in the mystery science video, that bucket of leaves as it decomposed kind of just turned to dirt uh, eventually. Yeah, remember that? So that dirt is really filled with, carbon because those leaves were part of the trees the leaves were breathing the stomatas and the leaves remember that oh my goodness there's so much stuff we've talked about okay so the leaves and the trees Josie are you geeked out right now because I'm so geeked out at all the connections we're making right now um anyway the stomata and the leaves were breathing so those have carbon in them right the leaves do the leaves fell down in the fall, but there's still bits of carbon in those dead, dried out leaves. And as those leaves deteriorate and disintegrate and decompose, and we learned that those little like white veins get on them and decompose them and turn them into dirt. Remember, you guys, some of you even found the leaves with those little white veins on them and the mold and whatever. So it turns to dirt. That dirt is now rich with carbon. It's filled with carbon. And then the plants are very happy to be getting even more carbon out of the Brown. soil, out of the dirt from all the decomposed plants and dead stuff. Even if out in the forest, some animal dies, right? Like, I don't know, a bunny. <gasps> stuff dies, fox eats a bunny. Maybe he eats part of it, but part of it's left there, right? He doesn't eat all of it. Okay, it happens. This is life, this is life in the wild, okay? So there's like a little bit of dead bunny or dead fox or dead squirrel or something laying on the ground. It's going to get eaten by a bunch of scavenger animals in the woods. But what's left that they can't eat is going to get broken down and decomposed eventually by then the decomposers. The worms, the mushrooms, the fungus, all of those guys, right? And it's eventually going to get broken down and go down into the soil and become a part of the soil. So there's constantly carbon cycling through every part every sphere it's in the biosphere it's in us and the plants the carbon's in us it's in the atmosphere because that's where we breathe it's in the geosphere it's it when it decomposes it gets in the dirt we just learned okay what about the hydrosphere what about the hydrosphere Ms. let's Bab, read some more Miss Bab, i have a question hey Miss Bab, I have a hey yeah okay hang on we're gonna pause for questions Maggie. Oh, what about the dirt, like the soil from like a thousand years ago, whatever you want to say? Um, does that still get part of the soil? You know, it has to go down. The dirt. Okay, so Maggie says, what about dirt from like long, long ago? So, like, if I'm digging for fossils or whatever, I'm going to get like way down deep, right? And there's dirt from like years and years and years ago down there. Uh -huh. well, well, that and that there's down carbon there. down there. Yes. So every layer of earth actually is filled with carbon, planets? okay? So hang on a second. It is a big circle of science, Josie. I, I couldn't be more geeked out today. Um, all right, so we're going we're gonna to look further at the diagram and talk about that, and then this is going to continue tomorrow because she believed so she could. Yeah, man, me and science, that's how that is. Um, okay. Zeke has a question. He's going to lose it if I don't call on him. Okay. So, um, of this diagram, I think I have a hypothesis of how it gets into the water.
water. Zeke has a hypothesis. He looked at the water. Okay, on the diagram. I think that the carbon will go into the oil and then the oil goes into the water. But then that's not my only question. He thinks carbon goes in oil and oil goes in water in the diagram. Okay, continue. Okay, okay so I think uh, the, does anything, I think, well, I'm still with the carbon monoxide, but does the carbon dioxide, like, does it have, like, change to it? Like, does it change into carbon monoxide? Does carbon dioxide change into carbon monoxide? It depends on what you do to the carbon dioxide. You just said oil so, and water mix. so carbon dioxide, I said, was a carbon with two oxygens. Dioxide means di means two, two oxygens. Carbon monoxide is carbon with one oxygen attached to it. It's way more toxic to us. So than the dioxide because we need the oxide part of it we need more oxygen okay because that's what our body's like so carbon monoxide is like a straight poisonous. toxin to us yeah it's poisonous to us um can you take away the oxides from the carbon yeah you can 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 the normal person just hanging out do that i don't know we'll talk about it well, we're back in the airtight room, okay? So, uh, well, if scientists like, how does the why is the carbon monoxide? So if you're in a room of carbon monoxide, how would it? I feel like, um, so if there's enough of it, I feel like you would get enough oxygen from it. If there's like billions of it, but um, if billions, um, billions of carbon monoxide molecules, but that's not how it works. That's not how it works. Um, he said he thought if there was enough carbon monoxide, meaning the ones that only have one oxygen, if there was enough of it, we could still breathe it. No, because the balance of carbon and oxygen is off. And so there would still be more carbon than there was oxygen. We need there to be more oxygen than there is carbon. Otherwise, our body can't process it. doesn't know what to do with it. Okay, so, the oxygen, so there's just not enough oxygen. Just not enough oxygen attached to carbon monoxide. No. Okay. All right, now, but that's fine because we got plenty of carbon dioxide. It's it's literally everywhere if we look in this diagram. Am I touching it? Um, you are touching it right now. You can't see it, but we are all swimming in carbon dioxide and oxygen and some other gases, nitrogen, some other things. Miss Bab, look at your screen. Right now. Okay, Josie. Yes, ma'am. Okay, right, so if I'm back in the tightrope, so if you take out all air and carbon dioxide, and there's nothing in there, and then you did this, you did this, and put the wind, what would you feel? Because there's no air or anything to feel. So, like, if I wave fast enough, I can feel like a breeze. You mean? And if there was nothing in there, if I wave fast enough, would I feel? Nothing. I'm assuming you would feel nothing because when you're doing this, you're actually feeling the gas molecules like <gasps> I mean, you feel it. And um, I'm it. so I'm fanning myself, right? I'm fanning the air molecules and I'm feeling them. Can't see them, they're gases, but, you can but I can feel it. So if we're in an airtight room, would we feel that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I'm not sure. I've never been in an airtight room, Josie. Me um, either. Kendall, what's your question? How do you get carbon dioxide? How do we get it? From the atmosphere. No, well, it's in the atmosphere. We get it because we are eating animals that have eaten plants. The plants are full of carbon dioxide because that's what they breathe. Okay? So... Let's look at this chart, okay? I really want my camera to look at this chart. Um, it's killing me, man. Okay. And I need to pin myself so I can see. Hang on. I want, I want, I want, I want this chart. No, hang on, hang on. I want to look at the chart, period. Okay, so looking at this chart, Candelio. So there is carbon dioxide, the CO2 in the air right here guys okay why are you guys talking i am literally standing in front of you teaching golly jeepers okay so the carbon dioxide is here in the air 
the plants, the trees, the grass, they breathe it in. They have a process that we didn't learn in depth about, but it's called photosynthesis, and that's how they breathe it in. And they combine the carbon dioxide with other things to make the food that they need to grow. Now, we, as they do that, once they breathe in the carbon dioxide, they're breathing out oxygen. We, as living things, I'm going to point to the deer. We're not deer, but we are living things like the deer, okay? Um, animals, humans, we get carbon dioxide a couple of ways. Our body brings it in when we eat plants and animals. Plants, um, obviously we don't eat trees and grass, but we eat corn and we eat green beans and we eat apples and we eat strawberries. So all those fruits and vegetables, they are a type of plant that grows. So they breathe in the carbon dioxide. So when we eat fruits and vegetables, and even when we eat meat, um, we are getting carbon dioxide. The deer eat the grass, the cows eat the grass, the chicken eats like, I don't know, some sort of seeds and stuff that were parts of a plant. So they're all full of carbon dioxide as well. And then when we eat those things, we get the carbon dioxide in our bodies. So remember when we did the exercise where we were jogging and we were talking about respiration yeah. and circulatory system. Yeah, respiration was our, oh Lord, oops. Respiratory was our lungs and circulatory was our blood and our veins and our heart, okay? And so remember we talked about the circulatory system. Hang on, pause. Circulatory system takes the oxygen from our lungs and starts taking the oxygen to all of our body parts, not just our bones and our muscles, but it takes it to our stomach and our intestines and all of our guts so that it can do their jobs, right? Because we need the oxygen for them to work. And as our body is using that oxygen, it turns it into carbon dioxide. I don't know the specifics of that. I just know that that's what happens like throughout our body. It uses the oxygen and in the process we end up with carbon dioxide, okay? but our body can't do anything with the carbon dioxide. So then as the blood's dropping off the oxygen, it's grabbing the carbon dioxide. It takes it back up where it drops it off of the lungs and the lungs says, goodbye, and we breathe out. We breathe in oxygen, we breathe out the carbon dioxide. And then the cycle starts all over because now when we breathe out, the carbon dioxide is, let's do this, back in the air, okay? Now, I have this little arrow that's going, carbon dioxide dissolves in the water. It's like that simple. Oxygen, carbon dioxide is part of the air. And the air is constantly touching the water, right? Okay. So, and the water is a moving thing, like the oceans, rivers, the lakes, right? This moving. So as it's moving, it's touching and it is changing and it's grabbing bits of those molecules. And some of them are dissolving in the water. Okay. So then the fish and all the th creatures in the ocean are also getting carbon, okay? The water has bits of carbon dioxide in it. Now, if you look below the ocean, there's an arrow coming out of the ocean floor that goes down into those dirt and rocks from like a long time ago, like Maggie talked about, right? And it says marine plankton remains. That means like all the fish and all the things that die in the ocean, just like the things that die here decompose on the ground, the things that die in the ocean decompose on the ocean floor. So that means all of the carbon that's in all the fishes and the octopuses and the whales and the sharks and even the ocean plants, all of that stuff's decomposing at the bottom of the ocean and it's going down into the ground below the ocean. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, how does all of this carbon that's in the geosphere down here in the ground, in the dirt and the rocks, how does it get back up? So we see these arrows going through the dirt and it says natural gas and oil. So something we haven't talked about yet because we haven't talked about geosphere yet is that there are natural gases and other things trapped down in these layers of rock. There are pockets of oils and pockets of gas. You've heard of people like or seen like in the fields when you're driving by some of the fields, you see like the oil machines that are like, drilling and, and mining oil out in the fields or whatever like you've seen those like the black thing that goes up and down like this and gets the oil right you guys know I'm not crazy I know I've seen him um, so you've heard that people drill for oil and drill for different things okay because there are pockets of and you see the black oil down here down deep in the ground okay 
So those are just natural resources that we have here on Earth. And these oils and natural gases that are down here are the things that we mine and use and turn into the things that we burn for heat for our houses. Um, it ultimately like even gasoline. like gasoline for our cars, kerosene. like kerosene, like there are lots of different oils and gases that we bring up from the ground and we can burn them off to get heat and other things that we use to make engines and motors go. So anytime you hear the word gas or oil, ultimately it probably came from somewhere down deep and it had to be mined up okay so when we mine all of this up it has all of the carbon that was in it from all of those decomposed things because remember the leaves in the bucket turn to dirt so all of this dirt and soil and rock is filled with the carbon from all of the decomposed things okay yeah but what zeke oh like but we don't get any uh but why does it matter that it has carbon in it? Are you just talking about the cycle that has carbon in it? I'm just talking about the cycle. Why does it matter? Every living thing has to have carbon to live. It's part of what our bodies, it's just part of the yeah, cycle. Yeah, we don't get carbon from the coal and oil. We don't drink it or eat it. So. No, we don't. But, so let's look at what happens when it comes back in. We use that carbon and maybe, maybe we have gasoline in our car. And you know when you're at the gas station, you sell, hear, uh, smell fumes? Yeah. Okay. Some of that um, are the different gases and whatever that are in gasoline. I don't know what the ratio of carbon is in like automobile gasoline um, or like the natural gases and the different fuels that we burn. Um, but if you were to even think about um, in my home, okay. So it's showing like coal. Coal is one of the things that's down here in the black area. Coal. Okay. So... We know that factories and things use coal to help run their furnaces That's and their true. engines. We even use um, bits of coal, like in our, like you have coal burning grills and stuff in the summer. So when you're burning coal on your grill in the summer, it's releasing carbon out of that coal into the atmosphere again. Okay. So you see how there's an arrow coming up here to the house and then there's an arrow coming out of the house. Also think about this. I have a fireplace. How many of you have a fireplace? An actual, like, legit can put a real piece of wood in it and burn it fireplace. Yeah. But you know about them, right? Look, my dad does. Okay. All right. I have, like, a legit put a piece of wood in it fireplace. Um, so, remember, all those pieces of wood have carbon, carbon in them and because it used to be a tree that breathed carbon. It's dead now, but there's still carbon trapped in the piece of wood. So, when I burn... It's gone. When I burn that log in my fireplace, and the smoke and all of the fumes that are coming off of it, it's releasing carbon and some other stuff. But carbon is one of the things that it's releasing back into the air in my home. And my home is not airtight. So when I open the door to go outside or get something to go to the mailbox or get in the car, you know, the air is moving back and forth um, in our homes, especially in the summertime. We're in and out constantly. Windows are open, whatever, in the spring and the fall when it's nicer. Um, so, yeah. and then also if you have that kind of fireplace, you have the chimney that takes a lot of the, so the smoke isn't building up in your house. The chimney takes all of it outside. So a little bit of it is coming into your house. Most of it's going from the chimney straight outside back into the atmosphere where it can either be breathed by the plants and then turned into carbon that we can use or whatever, um, or it evaporates and disintegrates back into the water. Okay. So that's kind of the cycle. It literally touches all four spheres and it's used by all four spheres because even the little fishes and the whales and the sharks, they have to have carbon too. Their bodies have carbon in them too. Okay. So Z. So we don't, uh, so one thing is the place in the gets like a lot of carbon. So we have, personally our family has, uh, like we don't have a gas to heat our house. Does like the carbon get released from our uh, vents room? Um, yeah. So he said they have like a wood burning heater. So he says, is there bits of carbon coming out of their vents because of the wood burning heater? Yes. Yes. So as anytime anything like that, any any type of wood or gas or oil or fuel is getting burned, carbon is being released back in the air because all of those pulled carbon out of the ground. All of those things that we can burn 
to get heat and energy came from something that was in the ground that had carbon in it. Okay. So yeah. Everybody. Does the fire burn the carbon up? No. It just moves it really. Um, I mean, carbon is an element just like anything else. Um, so it has a, every single element has a boiling point, melting point, freezing point. Like it has all of that. But the temperatures are so extreme. Like we really only encounter carbon as a gas. It would have to get incredibly, I don't know what temperature. Let's just figure it out real quick. Hang on. How, how cold does it have to be to freeze it? Would it be, it should be like absolutely This is what I'm, this is what I'm looking at. Um, carbon. Uh, hang on. What temperature is carbon a solid? 9,980 Fahrenheit. All right. Can someone hold that? Huh? Can we not carbon. pick it up or is it too hot? We would melt. It would not happen. Then how did it? Oh, they must be. Ew! What's gross about Hang on. It's just cold. Oh, and then it's okay. Can you use the bathroom? Huh? It's made of cold calories. Carbon, um, carbon almost skips the liquid point, the liquid stage. What it says is that carbon is going from a... Again? Solid yeah. to a gas. It has no melting point. I don't know what these temperatures are. But I know that 6,000 Fahrenheit's like ridiculous. We're not going to get that hot unless we force it in a lab. Um, and then you'll die. Well, I don't know that it's going to kill me. Um, I said it'll kill someone, not you. I know. Somebody could be anybody. Yeah. Like, trying to figure this out. Like you. A person like, like me. you. Yay! Did you toss your hand? No. No. Carbon is a solid at room temperature. Oh, Hang on. Carbon dioxide. Oh, don't do it. Okay. Okay. Carbon by itself is a solid. Carbon dioxide, when the oxygens get to it, turns it into a gas. Wait, so carbon um, remember that so, um, we'll talk about this, this uh, cycle of science that all fits together. We'll talk about this when we get to fourth quarter, how um, the elements change from solids to gases and all of that. We talked a little bit about that in third grade because I remember freezing things and, and whatever in here. Um, but we'll, we'll revisit. Um, chemical changes again in fourth quarter a little bit, um, but for now, for today, the big thing is is that we realize that the carbon cycle actually touches every biosphere or every sphere, not just the exchange between us and the plants. Okay, so carbon is actually in the air, being used by the plants, dissolving into the water, so that the fishes can use it too. Okay, and the little ocean plants, because we know there are ocean plants and little plants that live in the lakes and the rivers, right? So they need the carbon to breathe too. So some of the carbon's dissolving in the water for the water plants to use. The little fishes are eating the water plants and getting carbon. The cows are eating the grass. You guys are just playing, looking at yourself in the, what you consider a mirror. Um, okay, all right. Um, so. And then from there, as things die and decompose, it goes down into the ground, decomposes, and turns into soil, just like we saw in that video where the leaves turn into dirt eventually because the little white fungus roots get on it, eat it up, turn it into dirt. And after years and years and years, it gets into the oils, the natural gases, gets mined back up, burned as some sort of energy for heat or fuel for us. And when it does get burned up, it releases it back into the air 
and the process starts all over again. Okay, Sophie. Okay, I guess I could, um, go to yes, this one. Um, Josie. I have two questions. So, one, if we, do we need it? Like, I know we have it, but it kind of like the nutrients facts on like the back of a milk bottle or something. Um, would that be needed on there if we like needed to have it? And how much do you think we'd need? How much carbon do we need? Or how much of any nutrient do we need? Like carbon, because I know we have it and it helps cycle through our body, but I know we don't really need it, so. I have no idea what I'm saying. Hang on, no, I do. Yeah, we don't need our book. Our body, hang on, uses carbon um, on a nutritional level to build carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Um, so it helps us use some of the food energy that we have and it bonds with some of the things we eat and break down some of the foods we eat to help us use the energy from those foods. Does that answer your question? Also, I have another question. So yes. um, if it's all around in the air, um, does the sun affect its temperature all like all the time because it has like an exact temperature, but then would the sun affect it? Um, yes and no, because carbon dioxide is a gas at pretty much every temperature that could exist naturally on earth. Um, so regardless of whether we're at the equator or we're at the North pole, and it doesn't matter if it's the summer or the winter, um, carbon dioxide is still going to be in a gas state at any of those temperatures. It would have to be a much more extreme temperature one way or the other. And before I think, um, let me see. What temperature? Let me see if I could, cause this is what you guys keep coming back to and I didn't find the answer yet. What temperature does carbon dioxide freeze turn to a liquid? Right there. Carbon dioxide can exist as a liquid below 31 Celsius. Um, sorry, negative 56.6 Celsius. So what? that's like crazy cold. Negative 56 Celsius. And that makes sense too. It's even lower than that Fahrenheit. So it's not going to get to that temperature unless we just straight lose the sun. Um, so I it's not going to turn into a liquid. Yeah. And it's not hot. It's not hot. It's not hot. Oh, never mind. Solid. Solid. Go with the chili and see what's Okay. So, and to make sure you're looking up carbon dioxide and not just carbon, because carbon, the regular carbon all by itself is a solid at room temperature. It looks kind of like coal. Um, now, um, but no, so carbon dioxide is always going to be a gas at any temperature that we could be alive at. If it is hot or cold enough for carbon dioxide to change from a gas, then we're not going to be alive anyway. So it doesn't matter. It would be too hot or too cold for us to live at that point. So it's kind of like the Goldilocks zone. Uh, Earth, yes. Sean says, so it's like the Goldilocks zone. Yes. That's another reason why this is the, because without, and remember we said that um, our planet, um, every planet has an atmosphere, but our atmosphere is the only one that can support life because we have the perfect temperature to support carbon dioxide be staying a gas at all times. But if you went out to Neptune or Uranus, it's really cold out there. Number one, I don't even know if they have carbon dioxide in their atmosphere because it's so cold out there. It would probably be a liquid or a solid. It wouldn't be a gas anymore because it's just too cold way out there. So for, for at least human life, as we know it to live, we wouldn't be out, out there. So now Sean just pulled this back into our space unit in the Goldilocks zone. I love you guys 
so much. I love science so much. Um, I love how it all just fits. Um, okay. Another thing, Zeke. What's another thing? Okay. Okay, Sam, I think I need to call on Sam no, is what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. Zeke, stop. You can't tell me call on Sam and then start talking. Sam, go. So, um, <laughs> okay, so what about like Jupiter, like planets that are gases, do they have carbon dioxide in them? Jupiter and other planets, do they have carbon dioxide? I don't know. I will have to put that on the Wonder Wall. We're going to have to look that up, what gases are in the atmospheres of other planets. We can look that up. Okay. Um, but again, I don't know how far out we're going to have to be because I don't know what the surface temperatures of those other planets are because that would determine what state carbon dioxide would be, if it would be a liquid, solid gas, what it would be. Um, yeah. Remember in our space thing when I said, like, if the sun went away, we would, like, instantly die. Like, you said, like, you could, like, be alive for a little bit. But, um, so another thing that supports that is that it would be so cold that the carbon dioxide would turn to liquid and fall on us. Okay. So, yes, Zeke said without the sun, carbon, it would get so cold that the carbon dioxide would change forms about heaters? to a liquid and fall from the sky, fall from the atmosphere. It'd be raining cats and dogs in the sea. It'd be raining cats and dogs of carbon dioxide, and now we've wrapped it back into this morning's reading lesson. Carbon, you guys, carbon, figurative cat. language in the, the middle cat. of science. I don't know what's happening today. Um, you guys are on point. Okay. It's going to be raining carbon dogs and carbon cats. Car and, well, carbon dioxide, because the dogs and cats have carbon in them, so it's literally going to be raining carbon dioxide cats and dogs. Okay. Um, all right. We've solved science today, I think, guys. Um, any other questions? Any other questions? Carbon cycle. Do we have, like, how are we feeling about carbon cycle? I feel like 100%. 100%. Okay, we okay. So let's just review. Let's just review really quickly basics, because we've talked about so many other things that I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. We have talked about a lot today, so it might have got a little confusing. So let's just real quick review basic carbon dioxide cycle. Carbon dioxide's in the air. Yeah. Hang on, let me pin myself so I can see what I'm pointing at. Okay, carbon dioxide's up here in the air. Plants breathe it. The arrow from the air is going two places. It's going to plants breathing it, grass, trees, plants, flowers, and it's going to dissolve in the water so that the ocean plants can breathe it. Regardless, it's going to the two places where plants live because plants need to breathe it. Okay? Once the plants breathe it, they're giving off oxygen for us to breathe. Okay? So from here, the plants are getting eaten by animals, either or us, depending on what kind of plant it is, right? So we're eating carbon when we eat corn. And we're eating carbon when we eat peas and strawberries and the blackberries on the bushes and whatever Brian Robinson ate on the bush in the forest this morning, it had carbon in it. See what I did there? Okay. And the fish plants, the fish eat the plants over here. So now the fishes have carbon in them. The deer have carbon in them. Brian Robinson has carbon in them because he ate the berries. And now, but here's the deal. Some of those animals are going to die. Some of the plants are going to die, and they're going to decompose. And when decomposition happens, it turns into soil. Remember? Remember Mystery Science, and there were leaves in a bucket, and they turned into dirt because those white veins got on them? Yeah, it was a bucket of leaves that needed burned, but they didn't burn them. They just let it sit there, and those white veins, the fungus... The mold grew the little white veins on it, and it turned it into dirt and soil that is full of nutrients. All of that soil down deep has natural gases. We burn natural gas and coal for heat and energy. When we do that, it releases the carbon back into the air, and the process starts all over again. 
The other way that uh, um, carbon dioxide gets in the air is because our body breathes it out. The carbon that we can't use, our body breathes it out. So burning fuels for energy and us breathing puts carbon back in the air. Carbon from the air goes to the plants, either on land or water, for them to use. Once it's all used up, it decomposes and goes under the soil, so it can all start again. Basic carbon cycle, okay? Just know that there's always carbon. Um, little science facty fact is that um, it, matter cannot be created nor destroyed. So the carbon doesn't go anywhere. It's just getting used in different ways at different times, depending on where it is in the cycle. Okay? All right. That's what I got for today. There's no worksheet. All of that, just for science? Okay. All right, guys. Um, any other questions, thoughts, concerns? We're about to head to another recess. What do we learn Anything from you guys? Wait, oh. Happy. Wait, say bye first? How did we? We started with like twice as many people. I guess people didn't care about carbon. I don't know. Um, they say bye before they all leave. All right, um, I'll turn it around. You guys can say bye. I'm gonna stop bye. recording. Bye. Bye.